you can't really say, especially if it's a sound that doesn't exist, uh, how to convey that you need to kind of be philosophically connected to one another to some extent to say, oh, this is the way he communicates that or because it's just quite hard yeah. to communicate in sound. It may, of course, people that are in sound and they can say like, oh, you mean this chord? You mean a little bit of the happiness that... Uh, and sometimes I'm, I'm even... Um, moving like a, like a dancer to say like no it needs to be ooh, that load and you you make your whole body like weighted yeah. and you're like oh but that that's not specifically a sound but you need to understand that what what the communication of that is well, how do you think that works because you can easily misinterpret all these things <laughs> yeah absolutely that's <laughs> um, um, that's yeah. It's hard. I, there are a lot of ways to communicate sound and uh, what it needs to be. Um, and it's also what your perf- personal preference is a little bit, I think. Um, if I talk to uh, our designers or if I talk to the uh, art team or not, then we either go by um, by mimicking it or uh, giving a, just giving a word to it. You know, It can be really semantic. You can say like, it needs to be pressing or it needs to be angry or it needs to be powerful or or it needs to be quiet you know it needs to be intimate it needs to feel like uh, the world is quiet Um, you can do you can do a lot by semantic terms I think yeah uh, and if, if somebody does that, then it gives you a lot of freedom to in, for interpretation, I think. And uh, I, I really like that. So if somebody even comes up with a color, if somebody says, like, it needs to be red, <laughs> then uh, then it sounds like red, you know? It's like, it's uh, there's a little bit of power in there. Yeah. But if somebody says, like, it's light green, then I feel like, oh, yeah, that's, that's calming. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I really like that approach. Um, another, another way of doing that is um, uh, if it's giving example examples of yeah. uh, of what's already out there and um and that's also happening a lot and that's that that's just a great way of getting a really specific point across you know if you say like uh, i want this uh, impact of something i want it to sound exactly or i want to have it the same characteristics as this sound in this other game uh, which is out there um and that really works just to get like a super uh, to, to get a point across, I think. Yeah. In the first place, we, we, we already see each other more than our partners, I think, because we are <laughs> here the whole day. <laughs> and we basically all also sit now next to each other uh, in terms of space. So there's yeah. Sandra sitting in a studio and I'm um, on, uh, in, the, in the room uh, besides there. Yeah. So it's lit- literally like, I think, three or four meters away from each other. So we walk to each other just to check some stuff. Um, I think actually you're, you're saying something very important. So when people are working together, you can, of course, um, um, dedicate if you are a good fit by skills. But like you said it, like you see each other more than your partners. Yeah. Make sure that you work with people that you really like. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right. That's, that's something that, that's... Uh, it's so simple. It's super, <laughs> it's super simple, but it's important. I mean, um, uh, that this past two and a half years would, would look way different, have looked way different if uh, Sandra and I wouldn't get, get along. But that that's not the case. Um, I mean, it, you really need. It, it also takes time. If you start to work with somebody, then it takes time to get adjusted to uh, the words that somebody uses and what he means by that or she. Um, and um, also to to understand how people interpret it, kind of uh, certain things, you know, uh, what other people think important. And you always have to find a middle way, and you get better that in that uh, the longer you work with each other. Yeah. So what you often see, I think, uh, in the music industry, um, especially applied music industry, you see that uh, directors or um, uh, editors uh, they work with people for as a long time long extent of time and i think this is one of the main reasons because you you have to learn how to interpret uh, each other and, and and know how how the other how, how to work together kind of and that takes time it's hard to build it up every time from the ground up i think it's also a way of communicating the things that you feel without the fear of jeopardizing something so um maybe as an example when you're in a relationship um, let's say you treat each other uh, the way with the fear of you breaking up. Then it means that you act really differently. 
So the same, I, th- I believe, is is fitted at like creativity, uh, because you sometimes need to say things that the other person might not like or might not agree with. But if you say, or you are in the fear of your, like you're in the assumption that this person is going to be very mad about it or it's going to have some real life consequences, you can't really speak your heart. Yeah. And I think with creativity, you need to be kind of fearless in that. Yeah. Um, it, so- it sounds a little bit too loaded than it is. But I think if you act with that free will, with that free, uh, uh, boundless uh, uh, interaction with one another within the team, and especially with us, then you get the most beautiful products and the most beautiful outcome. Hey there, I appreciate you watching the video. If you like this one, check out this video or that video. If you wanna support the channel, make sure to click on top of my head on the logo and subscribe to the channel.